you so much. Uh, yeah, I am excited to be here. Hey, y'all, how are you? Um, well, it's it's been quite um, quite some time. I, I was with you a couple of years ago, and it's um, it's really an honor to be back with you again today. And um, I look forward to sharing some stuff with you. Some some things you may remember from two years ago. Some, if you were there, or, and definitely some some new stuff I want to share with you today. Um, I want to start off by sharing a short story with you. There were two fish in a tank, and one fish turns to the other and asks, do you know how to drive this thing? It was a tank. So during these unprecedented times, there's so much disruption and confusion and noise. You might feel like a fish trying to drive a tank too. Well, I hope you and your loved ones are doing well. I hope that you're enjoying this opportunity to be a part of DevTernity 2021, regardless of the challenges that you're facing. And I want to give you uh, a little disclaimer. I'm just a software developer. I'm I'm no expert. I'm I'm not a certified guru. I'm not a thought leader. I, I know a thing or two because I've seen a thing or two. And I'm sure that you could have, you know, you have stories that you can tell too. So I'm here to share some of my experience. And my hope is there are some nuggets in here of value that you can take away, that you can apply to your work, your career, maybe your life, and have some success with them. And speaking of making frequent mistakes, I'm going to share with you some of the most embarrassing mistakes right now. There were times in my journey so far and not so distant past where I was afraid to ask for help. I was afraid of what others might think if I admitted that I needed help or that I had I had made a mistake. There were times when I broke a promise. I didn't follow up on and I didn't deliver when I said I would. I didn't keep my word. There were times when um, I have avoided conflict at all costs. That's, you know, if if I saw trouble coming my way, it's like I'm going to run the other direction. I don't want to have anything with, you know, some of those hard conversations. And there are times when I saw something wrong, or I saw something that I needed to, to fix, that maybe it wasn't part of my job, but I failed to step up and take responsibility. And times in my, my career and my journey that I've seen other people do something that maybe they shouldn't have, or they did something really great. They did something really awesome, and I didn't let them know. I didn't encourage people. I didn't celebrate their success. I didn't give them constructive feedback when it could have really helped them. Um, guess what? All of these mistakes that I've just talked about have nothing to do with being a programmer. The most difficult parts of any job, and I believe the most valuable things we can do in any job, have nothing at all to do with technology. It's people. How we, how we value ourselves, how we look at ourselves, how we value other people, how we see other people. Oh, yeah, we're talking about leadership. <laughs> and where was I? Oh, yeah. If you, you may be thinking of this term leadership, and you might be thinking what I always used to think, and that is 
leadership is is only for management, right? It's that's a management thing. And for the longest time, I didn't want to have anything to do with being in management. I just I just wanted to write code. Just just give me a a, a room, give me a powerful computer, give me some you know some coffee, and let me sling some code. That's all I want. Leadership is for those management types. Okay. Well, leadership is not just for management. In fact, leadership is for all y'all. There are qualities and skills of being a leader that every one of us need to learn. And I guess I need to explain. Um, I, I'm from the South here in the U.S., and there's a term, a phrase that we use a lot, and that's y'all. So if you mean one person, that's you. And if you're talking to more than one person, you might say y'all. And if you mean everybody, you say all y'all. So all y'all that are on <laughs> this video today need to learn some leadership skills, right? Another misconception is that leadership is about being in control. Um, like you somehow, you know, you know, are in charge, you, you have control of, uh, you can, you know, make things happen. You can, no, it's, it's not that either. Le leadership is not about being in charge. Leadership is more about having influence on others, how to, how to earn trust, how to earn respect how to find common goals, how to negotiate with other people and other teams, how to have influence with others to, to help them to agree to help you with the work that you need to accomplish. What kind of legacy do you want to leave behind? What do you want written on your tombstone? I know that's kind of a morbid, maybe uncomfortable thought, but have you ever taken the time to really think about it? Another way to look at it is living with the end in mind. What do you want to be remembered for? Living with the end in mind can shape your focus and your priorities, your values, what's most important. Is this Am I going to be lying on my deathbed, however many, you know, <laughs> in the future and thinking, wow, I wish, I wish we had had more meetings. I wish we had, uh, we had just, you know, worked really harder on those sprints. <laughs> is, is that what you want to be remembered for? Well, what I hope is to give you a bigger lens to see your world. I, I want you to walk away from this with a, a bigger and more clear perspective on your life. And one of the things I want to tell you is that you are awesome. You may not realize it, but you're, you're pretty awesome. And we may have never met, but I believe without a doubt, that you are an awesome person. You are uniquely gifted to do amazing things that no one else but you can do. Unfortunately, most of us, all of us, <laughs> struggle with lies. Lies the world has told us about who we are, what we're capable of, lies we've told ourselves as we maybe compare ourselves to others and we don't we don't you know measure up well i believe that you are capable of more than you realize you can do bigger things than you've yet imagined you are braver stronger and smarter than you think creativity and imagination you know and other skills that are outside of, you know, what we normally think of are, are like a muscle. The more you 
use them, the stronger they get. I I know that you can do amazing things. And I have a kind of a, a short list of key ingredients that I believe you can follow to learn any new skill or accomplishing any big goal. And that is determination that you're going to do this thing. You're going to have methodic practice and you need some patience. Along with patience is also learning to forgive yourself because you're going to make mistakes. I make mistakes all the time. Mistakes don't mean you're a failure. Mistakes are a part of learning. I make mistakes every single day. And every su successful person you know is standing on a burning trash heap of mistakes. Now, you've, you've probably seen the internet meme about how to draw an owl. It's, you know, step one, you're going to draw some circles. Step two, draw the rest of the owl. Well, when, when we don't have a clear path to success, when we don't have a clear definition of success, we, we can waste a lot of time staying stuck at step one, or we get overwhelmed and we just, we just give up. I can't, I can't learn to do this because, I, you know, this is where I want to be, and I don't know how to get there. One of the tools that I want to share with you today is about setting personal goals or to, and even team goals using SMART. And, I, you know, using SMART goals to set clear expectations of the definition of success one step at a time. You may think, well, I, I want to be, you know, I heard about this new technology today. I want to become, you know, knowledgeable. I want to become an expert in this new programming language or this new framework. Now, I don't even know what that means. I don't even know how to become uh, an expert in this technology, but I can set a smart goal that, you know, for instance, by next Friday, I want to be able to create a new application and write a message to the console or in a window. And then set another SMART goal. Step by step, we'll build momentum and you'll get better and better. The amazing thing is, you know, as you may have heard that a, you know, the journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. It's having that determination, that, um, <laughs> that practice, and that patience. You know, you may not see immediate progress right away. But when you look back two months, three months, six months, a year later, you'll see, wow, because I took those individual steps, I am now farther than I ever imagined I would be. Another lie that we've bought into is multitasking. And this may come as a surprise, but <laughs> one way to do more and learn more is to focus on less. Our work culture puts a lot of value on multitasking. We put it in our job descriptions. We put it on our resumes. You know, I can, I'm the best multitasker ever. The truth is none of us are as good at multitasking as, that, as we think we are, no matter how hard we try to convince ourselves. Our industry talks about maximizing utilization and you know, cutting waste and, you know, being efficient and, you know, working harder, <laughs> or more, you know, moving faster, moving faster. Um, well, what, what can I, what's a parking lot or <laughs> I've already blown the joke. What's, what's a highway at a hundred percent utilization? It's a parking lot. It's, and it's not just my opinion, it's it's true for traffic, it's true for fluid dynamics and like electricity. It's also true for people. Any system where you know there's a flow of, of, of a workflow from start to finish, there's got to be slack in the system. 
in order for things to flow efficiently. Now, kids love going to a circus. If you've, if you know, if you know what I'm talking about, you know, the big tents and the the animals and the uh, clowns. Clowns are scary. Anyway, there's a lot of fun stuff at a circus, but kids, you know, they they love seeing the the lion tamer get into the cage with the lion and you know somehow not get mauled to death. The whip is cool. Um, you know, we think, wow, it's you know like Indiana Jones, cool guy with the whip. Um, but did you know that the whip does nothing for the lion? The whip is for the audience. But what's up with the chair? Lions have incredible powers of focus. That's what helps them to survive in the wild. And when you put the four legs of a chair in the lion's face, the lion can't decide which of the four legs he needs to focus on. And he becomes paralyzed, essentially paralyzed with fear or with indecision. And we are much the same way. We when we have too many tasks that we're trying to juggle, our brains become overloaded. We think we can switch from one task to another, but our brains can't stop thinking about those other problems. It's, even our subconscious will continue to work on those problems without us e even realizing it. Those other tasks haunt us even in our sleep. You know, how, you know, have you ever woken up one morning re realizing, oh, I know how to solve that problem. That's because our subconscious doesn't stop thinking about um, <laughs> the things that stress us out. It, and it may sound counterintuitive, but I guarantee that if you do everything in your power to limit the work that you do to one thing at a time, you will get more work done. You'll do it faster than trying to juggle too many things at once. You'll be more productive and you'll be able to do better work. If you try to be productive 100% of the time with to all the all the things that need to get done, there's a 100% chance you're going to burn out really fast. All right. So remember I told you earlier that you are awesome. And that is absolutely true. I want to say it again. You are awesome. However, there's more to it. There, there's more to life than you being awesome and learning new skills and being really good at what you do. Being awesome is only part of your story. I, I believe that you also have a purpose. Your life is valuable. I believe that there's a reason you're here. And it's not just to be really good at computers or writing software, you know, really good at your career, whatever it is that you're passionate about. I believe that your purpose, my purpose, everyone's purpose in life can be summed up as leaving it better than you found it. Now, I'm not talking necessarily about our planet and our environment. Those are good things. Um, absolutely, we should take care of our planet and our environment. What I mean is something more. Every encounter that you have every day, online or in person, with your friends, your family, your coworkers, and even strangers that you meet, every encounter is an opportunity for you to leave, leave it better than you found it. Engage with others, with kindness and empathy, and share with the world all those things that make you awesome. Because believe it, you know, like it or not, we are designed to be relational. We were, we're wired to live in community. We need each other. We need other people. 
and every, we need you to participate. We need you to share your awesomeness with, <laughs> with those around you and to, to really be conscious of the impact that you have, the work that you have, the, the skills that you have, the, the experiences that you have that you can share that would be a benefit to others. Early in my career, I worked under a manager that was very much like working for Dilbert's boss. I, I didn't like the man personally or professionally, and his incompetence was legendary. Mistakes were named after him, and yet he still continued to rise in rank and responsibilities. A lot of the work that I was required to do under his direction was of no value to anyone. For example, I was asked to create this huge binder of documentation for every method and stored procedure and the code that, that my team was creating. No one was going to read this documentation ever. Meaningless and pointless work is soul crushing. I toughed it out for more than a year, and I tried to find all the ways I could to get out from underneath his direction. And with no hope of relief in sight, I quit and found another job. And I said to myself, life is too short to work somewhere that stinks. Now, you might be even agreeing with me right now. So that's right. I don't have to put up with this. Take this job and shove it. Well, I started living by that this philosophy, and I offered it as advice to many others when I heard them complaining about their jobs. In technology, we are so privileged that we are in uh, high demand, that we have the luxury of being able to choose when and where we work. You know, if we don't like a job, we can we can leave it and, you know, people will pay us good money to work somewhere else. The problem is this idea began to pollute my perspective. When I was at a new job and things started to go sour, I would think, oh, great, here we go again. It's time to start looking for a new job. Years later, I was in a similar situation. I was not happy. I started interviewing at other companies, and there was a, I had this really great job offer, and I was trying to decide if I should take it or maybe hold out for something maybe better. And that's when my wife asked me two questions that stopped me in my tracks. Have you done everything you can do? And if you left right now, would you have any regrets? Oh, wow. I declined the job offer and I took ownership of the situation. I committed to doing everything I could to make my team successful. In the end, I left that job one year later, but I left having no regrets and extremely proud of the work that we had accomplished. It had been one of the most productive and prolific years of my career because I, I stepped up and took responsibility. Now, sure, there can be toxic environments, there can be career limiting situations, and there may be amazing opportunities that come along that justify you changing a job. But for for anything else, for just not not having a good time for for being for complaining and for you know not enjoying and having to work with difficult people and you know all those things, I've got a new mindset. And that is life is too short to let things stay the way they are. You've probably heard the phrase or something like it, well, that's not my job. I've learned that taking ownership and responsibility 
is the right thing to do. And it has far reaching effects. I've learned it's okay to be honest with your leadership, with your manager, to ask yourself and the people around you, is there, what can I do to help or to see a problem and say, well, if no one else is going to fix that, I'm going to do what I can to figure out how we can fix it. Because I don't want to work somewhere that <laughs> continues to ignore these, these kinds of problems. Well, speaking of leaving jobs, every now and again, we, we say goodbye to um, awesome people. Sometimes, you know, really, really good ones that we're going to miss. And regardless of the circumstances, we let them know how much we're going to miss them. We sometimes even may throw a party and tell stories about the awesome things they did and what they'll be remembered for. But one, on one such day, as a group of us were, were celebrating uh, one of our colleagues that was leaving to go on to do bigger and better things, it struck me, why can't we express our appreciation like this all the time? Why do we have to wait until someone is leaving before we let them know what kind of impact they've made and how awesome they are? When I came to this realization, I decided, well, I need to do something about it. And so I just started to run an experiment at the at the company I was at at the time. And I started every Friday posting a message on Slack about someone that I worked with that had made an impact on me in some way. And in this example, Nakoda was the customer support manager. And as someone described, he, he did the work of 10,000 men. He consistently went above and beyond to make customers happy. And he's really awesome. Well, the drawing is not, is not important. That's just something fun that I like to do. And usually what I said about that person wasn't all that amazing either. The real magic, the real magic was in what everyone else said throughout the day, story after story, encouragement and high fives. It was, it was beautiful. All I did was start the conversation. And this experiment lasted for about a year. And I had so many people thank me and tell me how special it was to be honored and recognized by their peers. I had so many people thank me for recognizing others that, that really deserved it. I was on a discussion panel recently, and someone asked the question, what's the biggest problem developers have? And some of the responses I heard were things like documentation, you know, developers don't like to create documentation or, you know, the problem is old technology or the problem is new technology or, you know, these personal preferences and really strong opinions and stack overflow responses like, well, you need to stop doing this and only do this or the kinds of responses that are like, well, real developers and then, you know, fill in the blank, which is just ridiculous. If you, if you write code of any kind, if you've written hello world, hello, you're, you're a developer. <laughs> There's no such thing as a real developer. We're all trying to solve problems. So I think the biggest problem is that we face in technology and, and practically any career is a lack of respect. And look, you know, as I look back over my career and my journey so far, I, I really think that respect for people is the most fundamental principle. 
Respect requires that a company is true to a goal of a sustainable workplace where its employees can thrive and not get burned out. A place where listening and empathy and respect that brings people together where people want to fight for each other's success. Uh, an environment where healthy work is promoted, well-being is a commitment, and to reduce friction and wasteful activities that, you know, get in the way of being productive and enjoying, you know, the work that we want to, to accomplish. Because everyone wants to do good work. You know, nobody wakes up and say, well, I'm going to go into work today and I'm just going to, well, I guess you could have a really stinky attitude, but it's probably because <laughs> there's no respect um, given or earned where you work. Respect is what enables you to be successful at all those other things. Now, you know, what I'm leading to, you know, and talking about Nakoda and the story of, of how, you know, I would celebrate folks every Friday and about respect, I, I, I'm leading towards encouragement. And how, how do you encourage others? See, I grew up in a family where there wasn't a whole lot of encouragement being shared. And and encouragement doesn't come natural to me. It's it's yet another skill that I've had to learn. And it's something I believe you can learn too. Here, I'll give you an example. Imagine you have a coworker named Mary. One day you say, Mary, I want you to know how much I appreciate all the database work that you do for our team. Not only that, but you are always smiling and cheerful and kind. You are such an encouragement to me and everyone around us. Thank you. Paul, thank you for always being willing to help. <clears throat> I know I can always count on you to help me when I'm stuck. It means a lot to me. You're awesome. <clears throat> Mark, um, thank you for uh, always showing up for meetings fully dressed. Keep up the good work, buddy. See, it's, it's not that hard. <laughs> Every one of us wants to know that the things we do matter, that our work has value and significance, that, that we have value. Encouragement highlights a person's strengths and it's, it's positive reinforcement. It encourages that person to go do more of the awesome things that they get recognized for. It's, it's a wonderful, wonderful feeling knowing that you've made a difference, that you've made a positive impact on someone else. There are lots of other ways that you can, you know, improve your life, your personal life, your career, and all kinds of, you know, facets of that will get you recognized as being a leader. One thing is, is starting with gratitude. What are you thankful for today? Would it be possible for you to start every day with just taking some time to reflect on, yeah, things may not be what they ought to be, but I am grateful that I have another day. I'm grateful that I have, you know, my laptop is working today. <laughs> uh, you know, there are so many things that you can find that you can be grateful for. And that attitude will pay dividends with how you treat other people. 
and how you treat other people. It can include things like telling people, thank you. It's pretty awesome to be, um, to be on the receiving end of, of just being thanked for doing something. Even if it's just, Hey, I'm doing my job. Thank you for being consistent with doing your job. <clears throat> Showing, you know, having some kind of reward system can also be an a incredible way to recognize folks and to encourage, you know, better behavior. Uh, public high fives, like I talked about with <laughs> with Nakota and that that story. Um, there's lots of different points-based reward systems. The company I work at now, we have, we use something called bonus leap and we have every month we get a, you know, a, an amount of points that we can give to other people. And those points can be exchanged for, you know, real money, real gift cards, real, you know, but that, you know, the, 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 the money and the gifts aren't the point. The point is, you know, someone recognizing you for doing, you know, part of part of your job or going above and beyond, you know, what was expected or just, you know, being cool with collaborating on solving a problem. If there's someone that you know who has impacted you in some way, either recently or in the past, let them know about it. Don't wait until it's too late. Now, I submit to you that there are three inevitable things in life. There's death, taxes, and PowerPoint. Sooner or later, it's going to happen. Uh, whether it's speaking to your team or your company, maybe a wedding, a, a meetup, or even a conference like this one, you'll have to stand up in front of a group of people or stand up virtually in front of a group of people and present some information. In 2011, 10 years ago, I finally got up the courage to give my first talk at a meetup, and I stank. I was terrible. But a funny thing happened. I had people thank me for sharing. I had people tell me to my face that I did a good job, even though I knew that I was the very worst speaker in speaker history. It took a while for it to sink in, but I learned a really valuable lesson about the power of community. There are people out there who are really awesome at being human, who will look past your mistakes, forgive you <laughs> of your mistakes, but at the same time, see the good and potential that you have and encourage you to not give up. Because when you do hard stuff, like sharing your skills and your experience, everyone benefits. I hope every day I'm a little more like one of those kinds of people. Now, here's one of my favorite quotes. When I gave my first talk, people didn't remember how I fumbled around how I my demos didn't work and I was floundering to try to get them to work. They remember me and they remember that even if it was some small, insignificant way, somehow I helped them with their their life, their their career, their their learning, their part of their journey. You know, <laughs> even no matter how small, to share with other people and have them come back later and 
tell you that they were inspired to actually go do that thing that you talked about, that you motivated them and encouraged them to do something that they hadn't done before. And, you know, maybe they took it in a different direction that you, you never would have imagined. Those have been the most rare and precious rewards I have experienced. And that's, it's the fuel that keeps me motivated to continue to be a part of the, the technical and developer community, because I love hearing those stories. I love hearing how, you know, something I said or did or, or whatever had a positive impact on someone else. And one of the most valuable opportunities you have right now is your community. It's a place where you can not only learn and grow and be challenged to do new things, I challenge you to get involved and find ways that you can give back. Public speaking is, is an amazing skill that is part of, you know, like a, a lot of different leadership skills that can set you apart and open doors, um, open up opportunities, launch you ahead. Uh, and, and the list of benefits goes on and on. But speaking isn't the only thing you can do to contribute to your community. Incredible things happen when you get involved, when you, you make new connections and new friendships and opportunities that come along that you would have never dreamed of. And you will realize, wow, if I hadn't have done that thing, if I hadn't have you know, got up the courage to get involved in the community, I would have never had the opportunity to do, you know, something that that's amazing. One of the reasons I think that people are reluctant to get involved in community and especially public speaking is this idea of imposter syndrome. They're, they're scared, right? I mean, it's, it's kind of a scary thing to put yourself out there. Um, you're afraid that someone's going to think you're a fraud, that you you're not <laughs> you're not qualified, or you know you're you're wrong. And so that fear keeps us from from doing incredible things. What I want to tell you uh, that can help you overcome this fear is that. You don't have to be an expert to share, you know, your experience and your skills, your, you know, where you're coming from. In fact, you have something that no one on the planet has. You have your experience. Your experience is unique to you, and people cannot argue with your experience. Now, People do argue. They will argue about, you know, syntax or, you know, technology, you know, this technology over this technology or this architecture over this architecture and, and so many practices and best practices and, and so forth. But people can't argue with your experience, with your motivation. Your motivation and your use case, your, your situation is probably totally different in many ways than what other people's experiences are. And that's, that's what becomes so extremely valuable. Why did you get involved in the technology that you're talking about? What mistakes did you make? What would, what would you do differently if you were to do it all over again? Those are the kinds of key takeaways, the, the information that people are most interested in hearing. They want to hear your story, and they can't argue <laughs> with your story. I also believe that all of us have a responsibility um, to make an impact on people around us, especially those of us in technology. 
we have a unique and amazing opportunity to touch lives all over the world through the power of technology. I should know, I'm speaking to you right now from almost 8,000 kilometers away in, you know, <laughs> totally different time zone. You never know if an act of kindness, a small investment of your time, or the technology that you help create could be the catalyst that inspires someone else's journey. All right, to recap what we've covered, here are, if, you're, if you were keeping count, maybe, <laughs> here are the seven ways that I believe that you can unlock your potential and become a leader and be more awesome. Number one, think about what kind of legacy you want to leave behind. What do you want to be remembered for? What's your, what's your mission statement for life? That'll help you to focus on the right things. Be patient and forgive yourself. Set achievable goals and measure your progress. Look back over how far you've come. You know, it, it's inevitable that we, you know, we look at the code we write today and then we look at the code we wrote six months ago or a year ago. We ought to be able to look at our code that we wrote a year ago and go, wow, why did I do that? What was I thinking? That's because we're learning and we're growing. And you can do the same kinds of things with other um, other things that you you want to learn and be passionate about. Manage your time wisely, and you can do more by focusing on less. Number four, take responsibility. It's always the right time to do the right thing, as Martin Luther King Jr. said. Step up and do what's right. Be grateful for what you have and the opportunity you have. Recognize that those of us in technology, we are so blessed. Regardless of your circumstances, you have so much to be thankful for. Be respectful of others. Have empathy for the people you work with and who your work affects. Find ways to encourage others. And last, share your experiences and blessings with others. Get out there and get involved in your community and don't be afraid. So when you virtually exit DevTurnity today, I want to remind you that you have a choice. I want to encourage you to continue to learn and grow, but also to share your awesomeness with others. Your adventure is, you know, your future is brighter than ever. Your adventure is just beginning today. I want to encourage you to maximize your talents and your strengths be courageous, do hard things, become a leader in your organization and community, and inspire others. Go and be awesome. Thank you. Thank you, David. It was really deep and great, and I think everybody enjoyed it. Thank you very much for your talk and uh, yeah, it was really welcome. Was really, really good. <laughs> so uh, yeah, uh, I don't see any single question in Slack. So just uh, just hearts and thank you and some good stuff. So uh, yeah. So basically, uh, I would like to thank you and uh, all attendees and all speakers. Uh, uh, which attended the Fraternity Conference today, and uh, I, I wish everybody a great Friday, and I hope to see some of you tomorrow. Yep. Thank you guys very much.
Thank you.